Hello there and welcome to the Midday Brief. My name is Kamini Nyamani. I'm on over the next 30 minutes. Here are some stories to expect. It's four days to elections and the heat is on. But some eligible voters in the Kasina Nankana district of the Upper East region are now going through the biometric voter registration exercise. We'll be talking to the EC on that matter. Now there are polls everywhere. But the Progressive People's Party says those are deliberate attempts to skew the 2012 elections in favor of the two main political parties. We'll cross over to the venue of the press conference where my colleague is on standby for more detail on this. In Wellness today, we'll bring you a report on a topic most people will not want to talk about, mouth order. Stay with me for details of these stories and many more. Now, the National Media Commission is reminding all houses to stop running political party advertisement by 7 a.m. Thursday. The cessation of the adverts would coincide with the Electoral Commission's directive to all political parties to cease campaigning 24 hours to elections. Right, moving on with the news, the Progressive People's Party says it is not happy with the outcome of polls in the media. Now, the PPP thinks the polls are deliberate attempts by the media to skew the elections in favor of the NDC and the NPP. My colleague, Derek Wallalong Johnson, uh, who was at uh, the press conference earlier today, joins us by telephone. Hello, Derek. Hi, Kimmy. Right. Uh, what is the PPP's problem, really, with the polls? Yeah, they are not happy about the deliberate attempts by a section of the media and the so-called posters uh, to skew the outcome of the election uh, 2012 in favor of either the NDC or the NPP. To them, even though they are not yet one year old, they deem themselves as a strong brand, that the PPP is a strong brand in itself, and that it shouldn't be only the NDC or the NPP. They have the policies in place to change Ghana, transform Ghana to, uh, uh, to, 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 to a better ground, so to speak. So for them to have this, uh, uh, this assertion that the NDC and the NPP are the only biggest parties in Ghana and that they should be given all the attention uh, that does not hold here nor there. So what were reactions from a media man who were present at the press conference uh, today? All right. In, in one of the instances, uh, it, it stated that uh, uh, the uh, newspapers, uh, especially the Daily Graphic in particular, and of course the Chronicle and uh, a pollster, uh, Benefson, have posited on its uh, political pages and oftentimes uh, warped electoral analysis as if no other political party exists except the NDC and the NPP. And that do not really go down well with the media. So they're asking, or they, they, they came up to say that even though you wouldn't see the PPP in all the newspapers, every media house is doing its best to make sure that they, 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 they kind of uh, 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 include PPP in their captions. Right now, uh, Madame Evaloko, the vice presidential candidate of uh, the PPP, was also present. Did she make any any announcements? Did she say anything? Yes, she did. Uh, to her, uh, misinformation uh, does kill credibility. And that we shouldn't uh, sacrifice uh, accuracy for speed. We're trying to be the first people to uh, announce this or to announce that it doesn't really augur well to the media because the media is a strong tool that is enough to transform any economy and is also enough or yeah it's 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 having the power to to kind of cause chaotic situations in any nation and that our reportage should be of circumspect uh, grounds so to speak uh, to her uh, we've done so well but there is more room for improvement 
Right now, did, did it make uh, you aware of the basis upon which they stand to make some of these pronouncements? Yes, it did. You know, there was a time, it was on air, I think on one of our channels, uh, I, I think it was Joy FM, that uh, uh, Heka was involved in a kind of a, a rampage. Uh, she was attacked and heckled and was beaten mercilessly. Uh, these are the very words she used at a press conference that uh, instances like that shouldn't uh, be condemned because uh, nothing actually happened that way. Even though uh, Joy FM get back to them uh, to tell them that, oh, uh, it was a misinformation, but they were of the view that they should have retracted it. They should have retracted the whole uh, story uh, in the face of the electorate so that everybody in Ghana knows that nothing actually happened like that. Uh, yes. Right. Uh, thank you, Derek. Derek Wolalom Johnson is uh, my colleague who was at the press conference held by the PPP. Now, according to the PPP, the recent polls that have come up uh, to put the NDC and the, P and the NPP in the lead of, of the elections, uh, our media attempts to skew the elections in favor of these two political parties. Now, moving on with the news and staying with polls, a poll conducted by polls that Ben Epson indicates that President Mahama will win by 52.2% votes, while Nana Addo will have 44.7 votes. I have an opinion poll conducted by United States-based organization, Geolink Partners Incorporated, contradicts the outcome of Ben Epson's poll, and according to the organization, Nana Addo will be the next president. According to Ben Epson's polls, President Mahama is expected to sweep 52.2% of the votes, while Nana Ajo will sweep 447 Now, the remaining five parties and the independent presidential candidates are expected to take 3% of the total valid votes cast. Ben Epson says the poll has 2% margin of error, and the poll conducted by the U.S.-based polling Organization, on the other hand, states that Nanado will emerge the winner by a little over 50% of the votes. Earlier polls had equally put NPP's Nanado ahead of the other candidates. So which of these, these uh, polls is given us the st status quo on, on only December um, 7 will we'll tell us. Uh, so we'll keep our fingers crossed and... Staying with uh, news uh, around elections, the Electoral Commission is from today, Monday, December 3, to Wednesday, December 5, undertaking a registration exercise for voters in Gayungo, Doba, Akuninkongo, Abemti, Ingo, and Atusale, Azasi electoral areas in the Kasinankana East District of the Upper East Region. This follows an order by the Fast Track High Court, which was presided over by Justice U.P. Derry and gave the order after finding the EC Chairman Dr. Kwejo Afarijan and two other officials of the Commission guilty of contempt for disregarding an order to conduct biometric registration of the voters in the area. The order directed the Electoral Commission to undertake registration of voters in those areas. Now, the action of the court was predicated on a judgment given on October 18, 2012 against the EC and six others by the court, presided over by Justice Edward Asante Amwakon, which ordered the EC to conduct registration of voters in eight affected registration centers uh, I mentioned earlier. Within, within 14 days, the Kasuna Nankana District of the Upper East region became a hotbed of boycotts during the voter biometric registration exercise some months ago. Now, the farming community threatened not to take part in the upcoming presidential and parliamentary elections in December because they were unhappy with the change of name of some of the polling stations. The registration was scheduled to start at 7 a.m. this morning. Now, uh, let's find out more from our uh, correspondent, Upper East Regional correspondent, Albert Sorry, who is on the ground. Uh, thanks for joining us, Albert. Hello, Albert.
Yeah, hello. How's the exercise started and how is it going so far? Um, Camille, let me say that um, the exercise has been very smooth. Um, in some of the polling uh, registration centers, there are four registration centers um, in Kandiga where the registration is currently going on. Um, in these four registration centers, um, the, the, the exercise started um, a little after 8 a.m. Um, it's only one of them that started um, very, very close to 9 o'clock because there were some delays. But let me say that there has been a massive turnout because um, the residents were highly anticipating uh, this registration process. So um, it, is, it is going on very smoothly. In one of the polling stations that I visited first, um, around 10 minutes to 11, which is the Akun Kongo Community Center, um, the registration officer there, Al Hassan Seydou, told me that um, they started at 8.30 exactly with the process. But um, shortly after they started, uh, their printing machine had uh, broken down. And so um, as at 11.30, when I was speaking to him, they were only able to register nine people and they were trying to get the printer replaced in order to continue. At Akrugu Dabo, which is one of the registration centers, uh, as at 11.30, um, 35, only eight people had been registered, according to the registration officer there, who is Robert Dante. He also told me that their printer had broken down, and that was why they managed to register only eight people. But um, I was there to see them fix the printer, and then people got back in the queue um, for the registration to continue before I moved on to the other polling station, which is the Azase Primary Registration um, Center. There, um, the registration officer there told me they started at 7 a.m. and they didn't encounter any problems. And so um, close to uh, midday when I was speaking to him, they had successfully registered 31 people and um, the, the, the queue was still very long. I could count a little over 20 people who were still queuing to register with others still uh, trooping to the place. At the moment, I am at the Abimpongo Primary uh, registration center and the registration officer there also tells me that they started smoothly and um, very close to nine o'clock and there uh, so far they have registered 24 people but there's a very long queue of people still waiting to get registered right now observing uh, the process what how would you describe the response of the people in, in the area do, do you believe it's encouraging yeah, it's very encouraging. Like I told you earlier, they had been anticipating this uh, process. And so there has been a very, very massive turnout. And security-wise, um, I have seen at least two police officers in every one of the polling stations uh, that I have visited. Right now, have you gathered information on when a verification exercise will be held uh, for people in this area? Voters. Um, no, I haven't gathered any information of the sort. I, I have been speaking with the um, registration officers, and they don't have any information on that because the uh, district elect uh, uh, EC officer has not been here yet. So um, I don't have any information on when the verification uh, exercise will be held. Now, we, we, will, we will get uh, that information when we get on the telephone with uh, Sylvia, not Principal Public Relations Officer uh, at the EC. But, but Albert, tell me, how do the, the, the voters, the potential voters, feel about this? Um, I, I spoke to a number of them who successfully registered. It was only those of them uh, in those centers where they had issues with the printers that were a little frustrated that... Um, they, they were not being registered as at the time. But um, I, I think that they, they, um, the impression I got from what the registration officers told me was that um, they, they were quickly going to fix those problems and to get them registered. And so um, those of them who have registered successfully are happy, except for those who are still waiting for the printer problems to get fixed that were having um, some, some anxiety of the sort. Right. Thank you very much. Albert Sorry is our Upper Eastern... Uh, original correspondent and we move on with the news I told you earlier we were putting in efforts to raise Sylvia and our principal public relations officer at uh, the electoral commission on the telephone line to really answer some questions on the whole process when the verification will take place if they they are likely to vote at all uh, since we have uh, barely four days to 
go to the polls. But uh, moving on, Nana Akovuado, the presidential candidate of the opposition New Patriotic Party, has ruled out foul play in the collapse of the state that he was standing on as he addressed the rally in Kumasi Sunday afternoon. The NPP presidential candidate said that although he took a fall as a result of the collapse, he's feeling just fine and he has been given a clean bill of health by fellow NPP man and medical practitioner Dr. Adukufo. Akufuado was addressing the Ashanti regional rally when the stage caved in, sending the NPP candidate and other party stalwarts, including former President Kufo Tumblin, to the ground. The incident, which occurred after a heavy downpour, brought the rally to an abrupt end. Meanwhile, the NPP presidential candidate is expected to hold a rally in the eastern regional capital of Kufuridra today. Now we'll cross over and talk to our eastern regional correspondent, uh, who is alive uh, from um, Koforidia, the rally grounds. Uh, his name is Haruna Yusif. Uh, thank you very much, Haruna. Thank you, too. Uh, you were there. Has the rally started? Yeah, uh, it's the regional capital. I'm currently at Koforidia, Jackson's Park, where preparations are underway to commence the Gagantua rally to be held in Koforidia, it's the region here. But at the moment, we've seen that they are still trying to erect the platform where the presidential candidate to address a rally in Kofod right here. That information reaching has currently revealed that the presidential candidate himself is not in the region as I, as I, as I speak to you. He's elsewhere and he'll be coming at exactly 2 o'clock. Right. But with me here, I have the second vice chairperson who is in the person of Mrs. Epua Secretary. So I would like to talk to him right now. Please go ahead. Hello, madam. Well, please, please go ahead. Hello, hello, madam. You are live on Johnny from Multi TV. Hello. Hello, madam. Hello. Right. Hello. Yes. Right, how, how are, um, uh, you you uh, are you are with the NPP. You are yes, with the NPP. Uh, yes. Absolutely, you're the regional secretary of the NPP. No, the regional second vice. Right, regional second vice second of the vice, NPP. Yes. Now, what I'm asking is, uh, tell us the preparations you you you're you're going through right now ahead of the rally, which I'm told will start at about two p.m. Yes, yes, yes. It's about 2 p.m. The rally is starting around 2 p.m. Right. So what are the preparations? What are you putting I I I together for, for the rally we, today? We, we already have our people around town going to house to house, preaching the good news of Nana Agrodankwa Ekufuado, especially our free SSS that we are very sure to deliver to Ghanaians to lighten the burdens of parents. Right. And so we have our people around. Nana is also around. The whole regional secretariat is standing by. And we have a lot of our good our supporters around from outside Ghana and then from other constituencies and from other regions to support this region, which is carrying the face of our flag bearer and our next president. Right. Now, I, I, I realize you're fired up for the event later today. But tell me, in the Ashanti region, your stage collapsed. Tell me what what you're putting in place so that we we, we do not have the same the same, the same thing yes happening in the eastern region. Thank you very much. We have prepared very well. We are all here supervising the the project, the platform project, so that we have a very solid platform project for our flag bearer and his entourage. And also, we will make sure that the platform is not loaded. So there will be no such incident in Eastern region. I can assure you that Eastern, we are ready for our president. So nothing of the sort will happen here. Right. Thank you very much uh, for no your time on the midday brief. No problem. Bye. Right. Hello? Uh, 
Right, you see. Hello? Uh, ab absolutely, we realize that the, the atmosphere is supercharged at the Jackson Park in Koforidia. But uh, who, who, who and who has arrived at the venue at the moment? Yeah, uh, actually, the atmosphere in Koforidia, in fact, I would have wished you are there to see yourself. In fact, the people are gathered here with the party colors. But what have you, they are here what, it. you see, what I'm asking is, we, we, we get a sense from the telephone that the atmosphere is charged. But tell us uh, some of the party bigwigs who have made their way there already, if, if, if there are any. No, I, I don't think that is not true because uh, the party members, Russian members, the party leading members, some of them are not at the rally grounds as we speak. Because... The information getting to us was that the flag bearer, all of them have gone to where the flag bearer is. Right. So at the exactly two o'clock, I think at the Kofodra Justice Park where the rally is going to be held. Right, right. Uh, thank you very much, Haruna. Haruna, you see, is our Eastern Regional Correspondent. You're watching the Midday Brief. I'll be right back. Oh, are we going to move our country? Oh, that's, uh... People, voters or potential voters in the Kasina Nankana district uh, to undergo uh, a biometric voter registration exercise as they couldn't do that uh, during the general exercise. And my original correspondent in the area told us uh, p persons have lined up in the various registration centers to undergo the process so they are not disenfranchised. December 7. Joining us by telephone is uh, Sylvia Anoshi's public relations, principal public relations officer at, at the EC. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. R really, uh, tell us what is going to happen from now till December 5. So I, I can talk to you about um, the registration, you know, Registration is underway in these electoral areas in the Council of Nankana um, district. Right. I, yes. I, but what happens thereafter, you know, as and when it is necessary for us to come out with uh, information regarding um, how we are going to vote and, and stuff like that would make it available to, to you. I, I, we, we, we know that after the registration exercise, uh, there was some sort of verification and and the and the register that was brought out so we could we could tell if uh, information that was taken was right or wrong. Are these people going to go through this process and when? Are you talking about exhibition? Come again. Are you talking about exhibition of the voters I, I'm talking about the fact that we had a process that we went through when, when the general registration exercise was ongoing. Yeah. Now, we, we, we had the verification period. We had the, the, the exhibition of the voter register. Will the, will the other potential voters in the Kasina Nankana East District also go through this process? Um, the law applies everywhere. And the law applies to um, all people who are citizens irrespective of race and creed. Now, here we are with the situation. Registration has been, uh, the green light has been given by the High Court for the Electoral Commission to proceed with registration. Now, what we are going to do is that we're going to abide by the, by the court rulings. We are doing registration up and when there is a need to do any type of thing, you know, uh, culminating, you know, and I made them from the registration, we made that public because there are processes involved. I do not want to preempt. The commission will come out with the details later. Can you give us a specific period the the, the registration is lasting? The registration is supposed to start today at uh, 10th of Wednesday. And end uh, on, on uh, Wednesday? Yeah. Uh, will these people be able to vote? That's what I'm saying. Now, the High Court has said that they should be um, registered voters in those areas should be captured on the voters' uh, register. 
So that is exactly what we are doing. If they have to, whether they have to vote or not, that's another issue altogether. And I don't want to be into that either. What we are doing now is registration. If there's a need for them to go to certain processes, you know, before voting, or uh, whether they will vote on election day, that will be decided upon by the commission. I'm, I'm not sure, but it sounds to me we we are unsure if these people who are registering will be voting in the December 7. Is that the impression we should we should pick? No, no, no. What, what I mean to say is that there are processes involved. So definitely the commission would meet and agree on what to do regarding what has to be done, you know, after the registration process. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Sylvia. I know it's with the EC. She is Principal Public Relations Officer. Now, moving on with the news. It's a topic that many people try to avoid, yet so many are affected by it. Halitosis or mouse odor is a condition that even your best friend might not be able to tell you if you have it. And it is very embarrassing when you're in a public place. Today on Wellness, we take you through some causes of mouth odor classified into physiological and pathological causes. We'll also take you through how what you eat can affect your teeth and gum. One of the most common diseases people hardly talk about is mouth odor, known in scientific terms as halitosis. Even though people hardly talk about it, mouth odor easily announces itself as soon as one sets out to communicate to another person. It is characterized with foul smell. People with chronic mouth odor have to battle poor social and communication skills as well as low self-esteem. Dental experts say mouth odor is not hereditary but acquired and caused by a number of factors that can be controlled or eliminated. The predisposing factors, like you say, contributory factors, um, uh, if inadequate cleaning in between the teeth, then the tongue, the tongue, it contains a lot of projections, you know, and these bacteria tend to hide in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they then break down protein products, you know. Certain acts, activities and foods have been labeled as mouth odor causing compounds. And some foods are also considered to cause transient mouth odor in humans. Certain foodstuffs, like a lot of dairy food, um, uh, proteins, uh, milk, uh, uh, chicken or you know, dairy food stuff because the, 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 some of the breasts smell like rotten eggs you know mm -hmm. so it's it's the bacteria which is producing what we call volatile sulfur compounds you know and it's these compounds which are obnoxious to, to, to the smell you yeah. see then of course um, where you see bleeding gums mm -hmm. then and then associated with bad breath, then obviously it means the person is not cleaning the gums well. Okay. So once you sort that out, the bad breath must go. Here's an example test to check if your mouth needs odor rescue. But occasionally you get people with really nice teeth and gums, mm -hmm. and yes, so they have bad breath. And research has shown that it's coming from, in fact, they have the bad breath when they start speaking to you. Yeah, okay. uh, it has shown that it's coming from the back of the tongue. Okay. You see, um, the back of the tongue. Uh, the secretions from the nose. You know, our nose is always secreting something, mm -hmm. whether we have cold or not. <laughs> These secretions, sometimes they drop on the back of the tongue and then they settle. And God, they are really foul, you know. They settle there and they dry. It's really bad. If you scrape the back of the tongue and you smell it, uh, it's really, really bad. Dentists prescribe some techniques for treating permanent and transient mouth odor conditions. It's either you are not brushing your teeth well, which means you must get the person in, um, examine the person uh, thoroughly, do what we call a scale and polish, mm -hmm. and then you give advice on toothbrushing instructions. Uh, with that, the type of toothbrush to use, the frequency of brushing, the technique of brushing, 
All these are very important. Then flossing, going in between the teeth to clean. And doing all this twice a day. It's not like, oh, there's some food in my teeth, so let me remove it. No. You do all these twice every day. So in other words, your teeth must be important to you. Once it's been diagnosed that your bad breath is coming from there. If, on the other hand, it's coming from a postnasal drip, then, of course, you can always be scraping the back of your tongue on a daily basis, twice a day. To smile confidently is one thing, and to love means another. Odor is obviously critical, and so will managing it. That's it for the midday brief today. My name is Kimini Nyamani Amano. Araba Kumsin comes up with election matters from your election headquarters after the international brief. Thanks for watching.